part that I've got here is based off an aerospace part that I used to make back in the day. I have the cycle time down to 12 seconds, and that's actually a little slow for being brass and running on this machine. The thing is, I was trying to use whatever tools we had in the shop because I was learning this machine. But if I really wanted to speed things up, I could do things like taking these two drills and using a stepped drill, or looking at the milling work and splitting it between multiple spindles instead of doing it all on one spindle. I've been running machines for over 18 years, all kinds of lathes, mills, mill turns, and this machine is unlike any of those machines I've ever ran. I've heard stories about people who get trained on this, and once they see how complex the movements are and how this machine runs, they get scared off. One shop, they went through three or four different operators who refused to get trained on it before a supervisor finally stepped up and learned the machine. Even I've come close to crashing it right before this video because I wanted to put it on an extra golden bolt holder just to make the machine look good. I didn't prove out the machine with that holder on there, so I didn't have the clearance when I move in Y. This is a machine where you need to put in a little bit of extra caution and care when setting it up but it will be your biggest money maker in your shop when you do. There's a lot happening here, but think of it like this. Each of these spindles has its own set of tools, and you're gonna take all of the tools that you need to make this part and divide it between all eight of these spindles. Then once you set up everything, you don't just run it and hope for the best. We deactivate all of our other spindles and we just run spindle one and the part off tool. And then once we prove that out, then we run spindle two and run it along with spindle one. Once those are good, then we activate spindle three, and then so on, just until you get all eight spindles running. So the cool thing is you can actually activate or deactivate any of the spindles on the screen. So you can run everything one at a time. Now the thing when you program this machine is that your cycle time for your part is actually determined by the longest running spindle. If you have one tool that's running longer than the others, then the other spindles will wait for that tool to finish before it rotates. So that tool, if it's running three seconds longer than the rest of the spindles, becomes your bottleneck. Now it almost becomes a game when you're setting up this machine because you're looking at your longest running spindle and you're trying to shorten the cycle time as much as you can to get the overall cycle time down for the part. So that's how you get your parts to run within seconds on this machine is because your longest tool only takes that long. So this is pretty cool. This software is TB Deco. It's built into the machine and you actually control a lot of the machine through this software. When you're touching off tools, all your geometry is stored in TB Deco. It's not through the machine. So you set your positions here and enter it through TB Deco. TB Deco is also where you program your machine. So here we have one of our turn tools and I've got all of the movement here in TB Deco. It already has all of the G codes needed to run that tool along with the spindle speeds which you set through the software. So all you do is just give it the motion of that tool. So it's actually really easy to program with. After you program everything, you can see all of your tools and all of your spindles in the software so you can see what tool is taking the longest. We have our cycle time down to 12 seconds. Our longest tool is this end mill here that we're running six times. So like I said, if we wanted to shorten this program, I would see what I could do to take some of these operations and move them to another spindle. You can also see that this software, it gives you your cycle time and it goes by milliseconds. When you're running this machine, every single millisecond that you can shave off your program matters because you're running thousands and thousands of parts. Back when we were a production shop and I was running parts for my dad, I remember every single one of our machines had a stopwatch hanging on top of it. That was for the operator to time themselves from every time they push the cycle start button to the next time that that machine ran to see if there was anything the operator could do to decrease the cycle time or decrease anything that they had to do outside of the machine while that light was blinking. It's like we always say, there's levels to this. This machine is that on the highest level. Seeing what you can do to bring down your cycle time to keep this machine spitting out parts every few seconds. It's almost like a game 
seeing what you can do to decrease that cycle time and to maximize the efficiency of the multi-Swiss. So thanks so much for watching. Remember, we have our Boombastic show happening in November. You're gonna be able to see this machine running along with every other machine in our shop. So make sure you sign up for that if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to our channel. I'll see you next time. We've got plenty more Swiss content coming.